Alright, Joe Tech here, JoeTech.com. Um, I have in my hands an iPhone that I own and a coworker's uh, G1 Google phone from T Mobile. I'm going to do a quick review of these uh, and just compare them. I've been using the iPhone for a little while and I've been getting used to this uh, G1 for the past few hours to learn how everything works. So, uh, first of all, you can notice that the dimensions are just slightly different. Uh, the G1 seems to be a little bit thinner than the iPhone um, side to side, but then as far as the actual thickness, it's, uh, it's about almost twice as thick. It's got a little curve at the end there. Um, they both have the volume buttons. Uh, this one has a little bit more. The G1 has a few more buttons on the front. Um, you have your call button, your home button. Uh, your roller wheel, which is kind of nice, like the Blackberry Pearl, back button, uh, end call or uh, turn off, and menu. Uh, the iPhone has this button on the front that is pretty much your home button and turn it on. Uh, it's got a power button on the top, and this one has power button on the front, of course, and. Both of these have your input on the bottom. The iPhone has its proprietary input and speakers. And the G1 has USB input on the bottom, which doesn't look like your normal USB, but it is. The G1 also has a camera button on the side for your camera, which we'll show you in a little bit. And they both have a camera. So that's pretty much the exterior of them, and we'll go through some of these features. Uh, first of all, they turn on and unlock a little bit differently. Uh, the iPhone has your slide to unlock, which everyone's used to. Slide it and unlocks. The G1 times out pretty quick, but you hit menu a second time, and that unlocks it. It also has another feature where if you want, you can have uh, an unlock mechanism where you have to draw a picture. And uh, so it's a little better if you're moving around in your pocket. You don't want it to unlock on accident. Okay, so both of these have uh, the same kind of scroll through the screens option. Um, you have multiple screens. G1 has a blank screen there. Um, your main screen, giant clock on it, which you can move this stuff around kind of like on the iPhone, only you get a little bit more freedom and then you can scroll to other screens and do other things. The G1 also has this little feature at the bottom here uh, which has another set of icons and that's everything else that you don't use as often. On your home screen you have the stuff that you use the most, dialer, contacts, browser, maps. Uh, we have a terminal here because we both like to get online. Um, on a SSH connection, but then you have everything else you want right there. So that's pretty much how those works. Um, it's a little easier to hit a button on my iPhone than it is on uh, the G1, but they're both fairly easy to do, so it's not too bad. Um, next thing we have, I want to take a look at what you're going to do most with these things hopefully and that is make a phone call. The dialers are fairly similar. Um, just the design is a little different. You have fairly large buttons. Your number displays up at the top. So I say 555-1212. Dial the same on my iPhone which is a little noisier. And I hit call over here on the iPhone and on this one I hit this little Whoops, still learning this. I hit the actual phone button down here. On my iPhone, I can just hit speaker. On the G1, I want to hit the menu, and then I hit speaker. And I don't really want to talk to anyone there, so I'm just going to end both of these. Okay, another thing I wanted to show off here is the keyboard functionality. The iPhone, uh, as you may or may not know, does not have a built-in QWERTY keyboard. It has a QWERTY keyboard, um, and it, it's fairly functional, and as soon as you get used to it, it's actually pretty good. Um, and the keys actually enlarge 
as you tap them. So you know what you're hitting right away, which is nice. And if you hold it down, you get uh, foreign languages. Um, but so it's a pretty good keyboard for not having a physical keyboard. For some people, the physical keyboard is, is really a must. And that's why the G1 includes one. Set that iPhone down for a second and show this off. Now when you, when you pull the keyboard up, let me go back a second and show you the mechanism. It actually uses this kind of complex looking slider mechanism, which is nice because it locks it back up into place, but allows you to kind of open it smoothly. And if you look at the back, you can kind of see how that works with this arced curve here. Anyway, back to the front of it. Uh, it it's got a pretty full keyboard. Um, the keys are kind of small, but they do stick out a little bit. I don't know if you can really even tell in the video. Uh, but you, can, you should go to the site and look at the pictures and uh, get a clearer view of it. But it's got a pretty full keyboard, and it's pretty easy to use. Um, not a whole lot of learning to do there. It's got a couple extra, uh, like a search key, a couple function keys, and that type of thing. Um, but that's one feature that it does have over the iPhone. It can be a, a blessing or a curse because it doesn't seem to have yet an on-screen keyboard. And <clears throat> if I'm sitting here and I want to, let's say, search for something, I can hit the button, but it's not doing anything. And, it, and I can't type anything in. Like, uh, let me go here and show you in here. If I want to search on my iPhone, I pull it up, and I can immediately start typing you know, Joe Tech, and I spell it way wrong with my left hand, but I can start typing right away, and it automatically starts finding it. With this, if I want to type, I'm going to have to use my other hand and open up the keyboard, and then the only downside is I'm typing away, and I hit the scroll wheel, and I've gone out of my typing area. Or I hit it the other way, and now I'm over here, and I don't know what I'm doing. So there's a couple downsides to that but it can be an upside to people who don't like the software keyboards.